Hello everyone, in this tutorial I am going to show you how to make your own controller for games. You are having a lot of controllers like this. Uh, if you take games like flight simulator controllers like this or most widely used. Okay, now we have a free solution to this that we can make our own controller for any games. Okay, in this tutorial I will help you to make a controller that can act like this, this throttle system for flight simulator. For this purpose, I'm going to use Arduino and uh, ultrasonic sensor and a bit of coding in C Sharp. Okay, for that first, you need to download Arduino, Arduino software, and before that, you need to download. Sorry, you need to get Arduino board. Yes, it's here. It's Arduino 3, something like that. Yeah. You can use any of the models you want. Arduino all three at Mega, if you wish. But you need to get this board, okay? It's just 799 rupees, or uh, it's uh, approximately around 11 or 12 US dollars. Okay, fine. You need to get this one. And next is that is that you need to buy an ultrasonic sensor, which is ultrasonic sensor, which costs around uh, 249 rupees. Okay, fine. Now use the link that is given in the description to download the template that has the source codes and the connection details just open it and click on download okay i have already downloaded this file so i'm not downloading it again okay yeah here it is okay now i'm going to extract it and the password is given in the description so use it and hit enter okay, now we got that open that file in the folder yeah, now moving to it. And now we have three parts Arduino part, C sharp part, and the readme file. Okay, first open the Arduino part and open it. Now we have the three files here one is the uh, connection diagram, and another one is the image format of the diagram. And the third one is the Arduino file. Oh, sorry. Fine, yeah, here is the connection part. Okay, we are going to use this kind of setup to connect between Arduino and the ultrasonic sensor. Okay, these are the basic setup. Now open the Arduino file. Now it has some codes there. Okay, let me explain what those codes is. Okay, okay now open it. Let this dial. Okay, this is how we are going to make our pin pin connections. Okay, it has four pins. And we are going to connect the trigger pin to the pin number 6 and the echo pin which is in yellow color to the Arduino and add between the Arduino and ultrasonic through pin 7. Okay, now here we have void setup and void loop. Void setup is for a single time that like initializations and here we are going to begin the serial communication at 9600 baud. Okay, inside void loop we have pin modes. The pin mode is set as an output in the trigger pin and we will set the pin mode of the echo pin as the input. We are going to send the trigger and receive it. Now what we are going to do is that uh, we are going to send a trigger pulse and we will wait for some time and going to receive it back. The time difference will help us to find the distance at which obstacle is there and our obstacle is our throttle okay. now i am using the input in terms of a duration so i need to convert it to inches so i am giving the duration to the uh, function that converts the duration into inches okay this is a function that returns that uh, value and i am receiving uh, the particular value that it sends into the inches variable and i am sending it on the serial that i am printing it on the serial port. now what we are going to do is that we are going to make a setup. Let's have a look into this. This is the Arduino board and this is the ultrasonic sensor which is HCSR04 and it has a 4 pin. I have made some changes to this so that can be easily plugged in and plugged out. Okay, now let's do the connection as we as what we saw in that diagram. Connect the echo. Then now we are going to connect the trigger pin. 
ACS and next is the ground and VCC. From the ground of the Arduino, ground the ultrasonic. Now we need to give a 5 volt power supply. It operates at the help of 5 volts power supply. Make sure that you plug it on 5 volt. Okay, now our setup is ready and now we need to connect the Arduino to the PC. Yeah, here I made the connection. Yes, now compile and load it. Yeah, it's almost done. Yeah, it's done. If you face any errors, go to this and check whether the COM port is correctly matching with the Arduino. You should get a done uploading message if it is successfully done. Okay, now go to serial monitor and here we have the values. Whenever I change the distance of the obstacle, we will get the distance in inches to the serial port. This is what the Arduino is sending in the serial port on COM3. Okay, now what we are going to do is that we are going to read the values from a software. We are going to make in Visual Studio using C Sharp so that we can trigger our own inputs to the game based on these in serial values now let's work on the second part that the c sharp part right click and extract it now we have a solution project solution there open it using visual studio you can use any versions you want i'm using 2015 enterprise edition okay now on the right side you have some files right click on mainform.cs and click on vcode Okay, this is a base code that is used to continuously monitor the serial port. We need to define the port and the board at which it need to talk. And next is, yeah, now scroll down and go to the line number 52. There you will have a function new serial data received. That what it going to do when a new serial data is received okay now go to line 67 and create a new string we are going to receive the value on string yeah encoding in ascii format as we are sending it in serial dot printer now oh, sorry now dot get string brackets of now we need to hit this it's enter yeah now we will get the values on the string now when you look here the tv data which is a text box we are going to display the value that it receives here the tv data dot append text and we need to send a string text yeah it's a string so give the string here we are going to append the string every time when it receives yeah, now build it again. It's no run. Yeah, we knew the query. It's COM3. My Arduino is not entering COM3. We are dealing at 9600 baht. Startless. Yeah, great. Now we have the values here. That what we receive is real worth is listed here we are almost done now whenever i move the value changes here okay this is fine i'm stopping this okay now we need to trigger some actions based on these values right yeah. okay for that i'm going to add two timers these timers are going to help me to trigger some actions Atom time intervals. Make it the interval one and enable this false and create another timer and make it as it's false and interval as one. Nice seed. Okay. Now go to main form. And here we need to add certain conditions after getting the value from the serial port. The assumption here is that we are going to receive the value and check it with the past entry that every time when a value is received 
we are going to check it continuously to the past value okay before that we need to convert the to integer but we are here we need to give boolean not an issue first let's do this with the string as we are violating the parameters type this might end up in this will end up in exception so make a try catch and move it into the try block so that even when there is a error our execution won't stop we will push it into the next iteration okay now after getting the value now we are going to make the conditions I have the values initialized here so no need to worry about it just keep on implementing the logic just follow me that when a serial data is received we are going to check it with a past value that is when past value is greater than the current value which means that the object is moving and towards us that the moving front towards the object is coming towards the sensor so I'm enabling the timer 1 and timer 2 as false I don't get confused and uh, not worry about this I will tell you what the timer is going to do and why I'm enabling it just stick on to the logic we are doing some actions when there's a change in distance that when, it, when the object moves closer we will enable timer 1 and when the object is moving away we will enable timer 2 and disable timer 1 that a throttle mechanism okay now what if when past value is equal to equal to the current value that there is no motion of the throttle so I'm going to disable both the timers that they are not allowed to do any actions okay fine now uh, at max we can bend a throttle to certain level in both the direction that when we push it we can send it up to only certain level and when we pull back we can also add the same we will be restricted by some clock okay here when the value is greater than 13 when the value is read from serial when it is greater than 13 uh, you can use any values 12 or something something whatever you want the extent to which the throttle can be moved I am using 13 when the value is greater than 13 that when it is at the rest position the timer 2 enable is false and also the timer 1 enable is false that no action should be done at this time that is not doing anything the both are same past equal to val and val is greater than or equal to 3 but the condition is different okay that when you move friend timer 1 is enabled and when we move backwards the timer 2 is enabled and when both are same both are disabled and the last condition is value greater than 3 okay fine what this timer is going to do now what for what reasons they are here yeah let me explain just double click on the timer timer 1 and when that when you look at that will be given object center that we are going to send some keys from C sharp based on the values that are uh, sorry based on the conditions when the timer is invoked we will be sending some keys for example here I am sending using send keys dot send the key which I want to rise is f3 that in flight simulator we will use f3 to accelerate that is to push the throttle you can use any keys you want but as you are looking to flight simulator we are going to use it for flight simulator and using f3 that when the throttle moves front time run is enabled which means we are increasing the speed and so conversely for time to an object is pulled back timer 2 is enabled so we need to slow down the engines the engine is slowed down with the help of f2 keys so i'm figuring that yeah we are almost done
Now, hope you got a clear idea that why these timers are here. Okay, fine. This, okay, let's try how this is going to work. But, okay, before that, I need to add one condition that when the value is lesser than some nearest value to this intro. Uh, yes. Listen. For example, I'm taking two, which is a most nearest to a value that I'm taking. SMT is dot sin, and I'm going to push the throttle to high. F3. I'm going to do it repeatedly when the value is less than or equal to 2. Like what we did when value is greater than or equal to 3, 13. This is to improve the experience of the throttle. It gives a good experience at how it moves. Okay, fine. Reveal the solution. Okay, fine. Now run the application. Com3960 start the game in parallel to this and we are here and now i'm slowly raising the throttle as, as i move forward the obstacles distance decreases speed is increasing at the same time when i pull back the throttle that i my pull back the box it's slowing down that's it now we have a throttle, our own throttle for our game. Like this, we can make our own controller for this game.